So, Mr. Bond, you want to understand what versions of Linux are the best for beginners wanting to get rid of Windows? Well, get into the video. Hello, this is Draft Snake. So, my understanding that you want to learn how or what versions of Linux are best for people getting into Linux and just drop Windows. I think that's a good idea. First before, we can, but first, before we proceed any further into the video, I'd like to thank my channel members. These are Miss Love and Darius Roos. They get early access to videos such as this one right here. As well as their badge, badge next to the name for videos and live streams. They indicate they are channel members and they get priority response to comments because their comments go straight to my phone and I get notified. So, let's get into the video. Now, I have a list of five operating systems here. I brought props. And we're going to pick one out at random out of the five. Now, these are my personal preferences for giving beginners choice. I'm just placed uh, desktop audio sources on, and I don't want that on. Oops. There we go. There we go. Okay, so choice of five operating systems here. One, two, three. Five. Choice of five, you may have just seen one. Choice of five operating systems to get away from using Windows for beginners. So, first one we're going to do is we're going to pick out the middle. Arch Linux. So, be for people wanting to get away. Now, you're probably thinking, why would I recommend Arch Linux for beginners? Wanting to get away from Windows. Let's simplize really. Um, for Arch Linux, it's mainly aimed at those who are okay with sitting around and fiddling with uh, fiddling with their computer, uh, okay with reading manuals, consulting tutorials, and the such. And that's why I that's why I recommend Arch Linux because it has it requires a lot of sitting down and reading through manuals and trying to understand things and working off your own initiative for quite a lot of it. Now, I like Arch. It has its place in the market, and it works. Until it doesn't, until you do something that might break it, such as, for example, your Xorg configuration might break it. Now, it has a good package manager. It actually has one of the, one of the better package managers, in my opinion. Because with Pac-Man, that I so dearly love, and that I th think should be the standard with every other package manager built in, you have the choice of parallel downloads at the same time. Now, I've covered videos about parallel downloads on our, uh, Debian Linux-based operating systems, but I think parallel downloads should be a built-in feature of every package manager. That's just how I feel about that. So, moving on to... Remaining four choices. We've got one, two. Okay, I guess we go with Fedora as my choice is being made for me. So, this is what Fedora Linux looks like. Type Fedora and you don't get this. You might get the hat, but search Fedora Linux. This is what it's supposed to look like. Fedora Linux is mainly used a lot by people who are okay with having a different system. It's a bit isolated uh, from the rest of the Linux ecosystem. It's developed by uh, IBM and Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Red Hat Enterprise Linux is, well, Red Hat Linux, Red Hat team is owned by IBM or International Business Machines. Has been for quite a while now. And I, I personally have spoken to IBM and Red Hat staff face to face when I was at the Sydney conference earlier on this uh, the Sydney Amazon AWS conference earlier on this year and I found out that Fedora Linux will carry on in its form it will carry on they have no plan on killing it anytime soon now that can be the hope it has the backing it has the financial backing of large uh, of a large company which is good now unfortunately there are some there's some humming and hiring about it People aren't exactly happy about the fact that it's got big money behind it. Like, don't get me wrong, we like the fact it's got big money, but it has big money. 
which is kind of a problem for a lot of people. It's sort it's a moral it's a moral standpoint. Whilst yes, Fedora Linux is good and it offers its own type of it offers its own package manager, it uses the yum pa uh, DNF package management and it has a lot of compatibility with things. It has a standpoint of are you okay with using things or not? Please don't start making noise. Talking to my Amazon device that should not be named. Let me nearly said its name. So, three more to go. One, two, or three. In this case, we're going to go with split the difference. My favorite, and the one that you're currently watching this, uh, where this is being recorded from, Debian. Debian Linux is this is what it looks like. You search Debian Linux, you'll get something like this. You might get some funky designs, but I tell you what, it looks nice. Debian Linux is my my personal choice. It has spawned many different operating systems, and it has grown out from necessity. Well, not necess no, not necessity, but more of a providing a stable environment for systems. Now, with Debian Linux, it uses the Aptitude or Apt Package Manager. Uh, any operating system that you have to do sudo apt get or sudo apt install or sudo apt something if you have to use apt with it it is using the package manager that was developed for debian so it is using the debian base now debian is a stable release operating system so it will lag behind in age and up to date however because it lags behind, it has the stability. That's what Debian tries to go for. Now, with Debian, uh, there is a lot of customization options. It has a lot of choices in the installer, for example. Uh, it gives you the ability to install a desktop environment straight from the get-go. During the installer, if you know what, which one you're going for. And I, I would recommend using research and the such, but it will give you a default one if you don't pick any, but it will give you a choice and you can then go from there. It's highly customizable, as you've seen many of times on this channel. However, it just, it, it, it's the opposite of what Todd Howard does. It actually just works. I don't like Todd Howard games, but still. Debian Linux actually just works. And the variations it has spawned over the years have proven that. Debian is highly flexible. It works brilliantly as as a server operating system, as a use as a user operating system. Whether you're advanced in your knowledge of Linux or have no idea what a computer does past just pressing the on button. So Debian Linux it gives you a lot of choices, and you don't need to go through the process of learning how the command line works, learning what. Uh, config configuration files could do you don't have to go through any of that with Debian Linux it just works and it's good now two choices left we're going to stray away from Debian for a moment we're going to look at Manjaro now Manjaro you're probably wondering if you know what Manjaro looks like or what it is you're probably wondering, well, why am I rec recommending Manjaro? I've spoken about, I've spoken badly about Manjaro before. Why am I recommending it? Well, it's simple as really. Uh, Manjaro is a variation of Arch Linux, and it actually comes with a desktop environment as standard. Now, there is at least uh, Xface, GNOME, and Cinnamon that I know for a fact work with uh, Debian Linux. Now. In the past, I used to mainline a Debian, Lin uh, not Debian Linux, uh, Manjaro Linux. Sorry, I said Debian when I didn't mean to. But in the past, I used to mainline uh, uh, Manjaro Linux because I had no idea the differences. I just picked an operating system, installed it, and used it. And for a period of time, this is what this channel was run on until one day it decided it didn't, didn't want to work anymore. I don't, I, I was messing around with it beforehand when it just went. I give up, I surrender, please stop torturing me. Which is unfortunate, but there we go. Now, 
Manjaro Linux is aimed at the people who like the idea of Arch Linux, but don't like the idea of having to go through, set up your own desktop environment, set up the Xorg server, set, um, this config, that config, every other config. However, it also does have the Pac-Man package manager, which if we remember from earlier, has my favorite thing, parallel downloads. Every operating systems package manager should have parallel downloads built into the package manager, and that's just where I stand. Again, my opinion, you're welcome to your own, but that's just fine. Finally, Linux, Linux Minnel. It printed off as Linux Minnel when that's supposed to be a T. Supposed to be a T there. But Linux Mint, that is my final recommendation. Of, of the top five Linux operating systems for people who want to get away from Linux. Now, why do I suggest Linux Mint? Well, I suggest Mint because it's a very, it's again, it's a variation of Debian. So we're looking at a good stable operating system here. We know it works. It's good. It has its place in the market. Now, Linux Mint is mainly aimed at people who want to take the jump between Windows, or between Windows and Linux, but aren't exactly computer confident. Like we know, we, we have people we know that aren't exactly computer confident, but they are absolutely sick to death of Windows being Windows, such as going, oh, it's time to update your computer. Um, shut down, uh, update and shut down. No, no, it restarts for some reason. For some reason, update and restart shuts down. So, what? And the fact you've got to sign into everything to be able to download things about to log into your own computer like no no that's it's ridiculous linux mint is designed for people who are tired of windows but are not exactly 100 percent computer confident so it's there as a safety net it's sort of a bridge between the two of them now it's also quite flexible you can add your own desktop environment it comes with the cinnamon desktop environment as standard now I use Cinnamon on my own computer, as, as viewers may know, where it looks like Windows XP. It comes with that as standard. It doesn't look like Windows XP. However, it functions like it. It has the customizability you want. It makes life easy. And it is overall a nice operating system to look at. It functions as expected. There is no having to change a million and one different configs and hoping it may work. It will work, and it is up to you to make those changes. You can change anything you want, but it will work straight out, out of the box. It will function as expected, and it will not give you the, oh, please sign in to be able to log in. You need to provide your login because you have to sign in. Um, have you tried considering using the Microsoft Store? Have you decided to watch an advert to play Solitaire? I hate where Microsoft has gone with that. I used to be able to play Solitaire on Windows 8.1 without getting adverts. I used to be able to play Solitaire on Windows 10 without getting adverts. Now I get adverts. That is another reason why to move away from Windows. I hate the fact there is adverts for playing Solitaire. No thanks. Absolutely bloody ridiculous. Has no place in society. So, Mr. Bond. Have you made your choice? And this is your assignment, should you ever so choose to accept it. I hope, I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember, when you use Linux, don't panic. I have been Nick, you have been amazing, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Goodbye.